Happy Friday and welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. Today I am actually drawing inspiration from the first video that I ever made on this channel. It was called Books That I Didn't Like But You Might and it was because I was doing a big unhaul and taking some of my books to the tube book swap thing and so I went through each book I was giving away and why I didn't like it but I also tried to say something positive about it for why someone else might want it and I was re-watching that video and I thought that I actually really liked that idea and I forgot that I'd ever done it because I always really like thinking about who the perfect reader is for a book. Whether or not I liked that book, there's somebody out there who will love it and I really enjoy figuring out who that is and trying to pair them up. Unless it's a book that I actually think is like offensive in some way, in which case I just don't enjoy talking about it. But for anything else, there's gotta be someone who's gonna love it, even if I thought it was rubbish. So today I am throwing a ton of books into a big old bag and tomorrow I'm gonna take them all to the charity shop down the road because I need to clear some space on my shelves. So I thought I'd go back and do that video again and tell you why you might like these books that I didn't. So this is a book called The Hourglass Factory by Lucy Ribchester and I did a video on this. I did one of my Snapchat book reviews that I used to do before I properly started this channel, so I'll link to that. I didn't dislike this book, but I remember struggling to get through it, partly because it's huge, and partly I just wasn't particularly engaged, but it's got so many elements in it that are fantastic. So I felt like I should have loved it, and maybe there was just something I missed that someone else will be really enchanted by. I guess my main problem is that I don't tend to love historical fiction, and this is historical fiction. But I was hoping it would draw me in anyway, because it's got so many elements that do catch my attention. It's got suffragettes, it's got the circus, it's got the sinking of the Titanic. I mean, really exciting stuff going on in here. And I'm sure there are plenty of people who will find this just a whirlwind tour that they're completely obsessed with. But I remember never quite connecting to the main characters, so there was nothing really pulling me through the book. And for something this long, you do really need to be pulled through it by caring a lot about the people in it. So yeah, I think there are plenty of you that will love this one. Another book that I so wanted to love is The Luster of Lost Things by Sophie Chen Keller. This one is really beautifully written, I'll give it that. And I did actually fall in love with it at first. The first section of this book, I was thinking it was gonna be one of my favorites of the year. It's magical realism, it's very surreally written, it's very beautiful and sad, and all the things that made me fall in love with the book. But somewhere in the middle, I kind of lost attention. And I think possibly it was because it was just too surreal for me, so I slightly lost grip on any reality to kind of relate to, which for some people will be a plus. The fact that it seems to take place on this just kind of other magical realm, I know will really engage a lot of readers, but I do remember coming back and loving the ending. So I think this one was really close to being a gorgeous book for me. God, there's so many in this pile that I really wanted to love. Everything Here is Beautiful by Mira T. Lee was one of my highest anticipated. It's got a blurb from Celeste Ng, who I love. It's got this gorgeous cover and it's about sisters. I mean, I was just convinced that I was gonna love this book. And sadly, I actually DNF'd it halfway through. I found the story just a little bit too disconnected. I struggled to follow what was really happening and therefore I struggled to relate which is a shame because there was a really, really interesting cast of characters in this book. I thought it was gonna be just mainly about the sisters, but actually I really, really cared about the various men in their lives as well. And I think there's probably something to be said about how it's a deliberate disconnect that she makes you feel to reflect the mental health issues of the younger sister and the disconnect that she feels from her real life. That's probably what I was supposed to take from this. So I kind of feel like it's just my own failing that I didn't quite manage with it. But it is quite rare for me to DNF a book that far through. Usually I decide much further towards the beginning that I'm just not interested and once I've got past the halfway mark then I kind of really want to know and the fact that with this one I just felt like I'd lost any sense of what I was supposed to be waiting for is what made me not finish this book. So a cleverer and more determined reader than me will love this. Okay, this is a book that's had a ton of hype at the moment. This is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen and I feel like it's just bad luck really for this book. The main reason I didn't like it is because I had just read a book that was almost identical. So everything that happened, I was kind of rolling my eyes because I'd just read it happen in another book and that's not their fault. <laughs> I've also seen a lot of people talking about how amazing the twist is, but for me, it's not even that I guess the twist, it's that literally from the beginning, like from the first chapter, I made an assumption and then I was like, oh wait, no, I'm not supposed to think that. But that assumption I'd originally made 
was the twist. So I then couldn't shake it. It's just what I thought the book was telling me before I realised it wasn't trying to tell me that. Is that making any sense? So when the twist did eventually happen, like 75% of the way through this book, it was just like, finally, we've revealed what I already thought I knew from page one. If I hadn't accidentally guessed that twist, and if I hadn't read a book very similar just before it, then I would have been gripped by this one. Because the twist is actually very clever, and the storyline is very dark and creepy, just how I like it, but it just wasn't gonna work for me after I'd read something so similar. And I think the plot hinged a little too heavily on the twist, because the fact that I guessed it then meant there wasn't really anything left for me to grab onto, and I think the sign of a really good thriller is that even if you guess the twist, it's still a lot of fun watching it play out, and this one wasn't so much. Here's a book that I definitely didn't dislike, I had a lot of fun with it but I'm just not going to go back to it, and that is Choose Your Own Love Story. I really really love the concept of this, it's like a choose your own adventure but the romance edition. And I read this one on my summer holiday two years ago and I do remember laughing at it and enjoying it, but it just wasn't quite, there wasn't enough of a spark that would make me want to go back and pick it up now and choose a different route. I kind of did a few different routes and was like, cool. I get the gist. But I do think it's such a fun idea and it would make a pretty good gift so someone else is going to enjoy at least going through the first few routes like I did and hopefully they'll find it even more entertaining so that they keep wanting to return to it over the years. Okay, this one I just feel ashamed of myself that it's on my list but this is Jazz by Toni Morrison. I don't even have to tell you why other people will love it. I know that most other people love it. This is one of those books that I'm definitely supposed to get but I just really struggled to get into it and I didn't manage to finish it. But I will be giving another Toni Morrison a go because I'm really, really interested in her as a writer. I've never read any of her books. This one didn't quite connect with me, but I'm really interested in reading Beloved next. So yeah, I have nothing else to say on this one. You know that people love this book. You will have heard people talk very eloquently about why it's such an important and great book. So this is entirely my own fault. An author that I used to love when I was a teenager, like I was obsessed with her and I probably still read more of her books than any other author, is Jodie Piku. Side note, I said that to my friend the other day and she laughed at me for a very long time because apparently I'm pronouncing that name really, really wrong. Maybe it's Pickled? Pickled? I can't remember what she said. I've been saying Piku, but come to think of it, that does sound like I got it from Pikachu. Anyway, I have a big Jodie whatever her name is collection, so I will be keeping a lot of these. But these ones are just ones that I didn't find as memorable, 19 Minutes and Keeping Faith. I loved books like The Pact, and that was the first one I read, and I definitely have been keeping that one on my bookshelf. These two, I hope, will go down really well with people who maybe have never read a Jodie Pico book before, or have only ever read a few. I think these were some of the last ones I read, and much as I love her, she's possibly a little bit formulaic, so once you've read quite a few of them, you kind of see where the stories are going, which is maybe why I didn't remember these ones as much. But for people who haven't overdosed on J.D. Pico already, you can't not get swept up in these stories. Next, Oxfam will be receiving Sophie Kinsella's My Not So Perfect Life, which is a book that I did really enjoy while I was reading it, but I'm just not going to go back to it. I do go back over and over again to the Confessions of a Shopaholic series, those are just some of my favourite comfort reads. But this one, while it did make me laugh out loud and I found it really, really relatable, didn't quite connect with me in the same way as those, so it's not going to be one that I go back to. Which is why I'm giving it away, even though if you're in the mood for something light-hearted but very honest, you will really enjoy this book. And she's a very funny writer. Some of the scenes are a little bit cheesy, but in a good way. Okay, so what do people think of Haruki Murakami? I have only ever read one of his books, and I read it randomly on holiday because we were staying in this villa and someone had left it behind there. So me, my sister, and the guy we were on holiday with all read it one after another, and we all really enjoyed it. We had never read any Murakami before, we found it so weird and surreal, we'd never even heard of him before, so it was quite the experience. But after that, we all decided that he was going to be our new favourite author, and that we were all going to read everything he'd ever written. So naturally, I rushed out straight away and I bought the Wind Up Bird Chronicles. And that was maybe 10 years ago, and to this day I have not been able to finish it. That weirdness I loved so much in After Dark worked really well in a short book, but this is a long book, and I keep getting confused and stuck and giving up. So 10 years down the line, I am officially giving up and donating that one to Oxfam. But again, I think that's maybe because while I really, really love elements of surrealism and magical realism, I think I'm quite picky about the level of it in books. For a voracious reader, apparently I don't have that good of an imagination. And finally, the last book that Oxfam will be getting from me, this time around at least, is Ghostland. Now this is one that I can so easily see the audience for, and I think it's going to be a huge audience. I only read the first couple of chapters of this book 
before realizing that that audience is not me. So here's the thing. I don't believe in ghosts in any way, shape or form, but I kind of love ghost stories. I kind of love scaring myself and imagining what it might be like if there were ghosts. And I think when I saw the title Ghostland, that's the emotion that I thought I would get from this, but that's because I'd never really tried to read ghost non-fiction before. This book isn't saying that ghosts are real, you absolutely could enjoy this book without believing at all in ghosts, because in fact he questions why people believe in ghosts and why certain places are deemed haunted, but I still think I would enjoy this more if my belief in ghosts was slightly there, if it was like a fraction that allowed me to believe it, then I would enjoy reading about these haunted houses and getting scared. But as it is, I think I need the element of fiction to make that happen for me, because when I'm just reading about real places, the cynic in my brain is just like, it's just not haunted though, is it? It's just not interesting. So that's why this book just wasn't gonna work for me. But I know so many people who are way more open to ghost stories than I am. Even if they don't necessarily believe in ghosts, that kind of supernatural mysticism is something that really, really intrigues a lot of people I know and has just never really intrigued me. So if you are willing to open your mind and read about the most haunted houses in America, this is the book for you. So that's all of them. All I need to do now is lug that massive bag of books all the way to Oxfam, which is gonna take a lot of arm strength that I don't have. I also now need to go and play with my camera settings and figure out why it's being so weird. But for now, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button for new videos every Friday. And of course, do leave me a comment telling me why I'm wrong to not like these books because I'll probably believe you and go right out and buy them again because that's the kind of stupid thing that I do. Oops, see you next time. Stop putting me out of focus, you mean all thing. I'm here. Oh, I went out of focus. I'm here. I'm here. My face is right here. Do I have to stop going off my face? My face is here. Come back face. Come back face. Stop going out of focus. Driving me insane. Face. Why?